Hello everyone and welcome to the channel or welcome back to the channel. In this video we are going to talk about nearly one in four of the older adults age 55 and older were experiencing unsheltered homelessness living in places not meant for human habitation. So let's talk about it and don't forget to subscribe to the channel, comment, like, and share the video, it's free. Beatrice, 73, clutched a flyer offering low-cost cable TV, imagining herself in an apartment somewhere out of the Arizona heat, where like others her age, she could settle into an armchair and tune into a television of her own. Instead, the grandmother and former auto worker can be found most mornings in a food line or seeking shade under the awning of a mobile street clinic. At night, she sleeps on a floor mat at a homeless shelter. She laments the odors of human waste outside and the thieves who have victimized her repeatedly. My wallet's gone, she said. My purse was stolen. She hardly stands out from the dozens of seniors using wheelchairs and walkers at a complex of homeless shelters near downtown Phoenix, or from the white-haired denizens of tents in the surrounding streets, a testament to a demographic surge that is overwhelming America's social safety net. Nearly a quarter of a million people 55 or older are estimated by the government to have been homeless. In the United States during at least part of 2019, the most recent reliable federal count available, they represent a particularly vulnerable segment of the 70 million Americans born after World War II known as the Baby Boomer Generation, the youngest of whom turned 59 this year. Advocates for homeless people in many big cities say they have seen a spike in the number of elderly homeless individuals who have unique health and housing needs. Some communities, including Phoenix and Orange County in California, are racing to come up with novel solutions, including establishing senior shelters and hiring specially trained staff. It's just a catastrophe. This is the fastest growing group of people who are homeless. The largest shelter provider in Arizona, Central Arizona Shelter Services is rushing to open an over 55 shelter in a former Phoenix hotel this summer with private rooms and medical and social services tailored for older people. The facility will open with 40 beds and eventually reach a capacity of 170, but that will barely begin to address the problem of keeping older people safe and healthy. It served 1,717 older adults in 2022, an increase in one year of 43%. In Orange County, a Medicaid plan is creating a 119-bed, first-of-its-kind unit that essentially will serve as an assisted living facility exclusively for homeless people. The current shelter system cannot accommodate the physical needs of this population. In San Francisco, Portland, Oregon and Anchorage, seniors also are staying for months in respite centers that were meant to provide a short-term stay for homeless people to recuperate. In Boise, shelter operators are hiring staff with backgrounds in long-term care to help homeless clients manage their daily needs while living for long stretches in hotels. The homeless population is famously difficult to count. People 55 and older represented 16.5% of America's homeless population of 1.45 million in 2019, according to the most recent reliable data. The population of homeless seniors 65 and older will double or even triple 2017 levels in some places before peaking around 2030. It's in crisis proportions. And it's in your face. Average citizens can see people in wheelchairs, people in walkers, people with incontinence and colostomy bags living out of a tent. A devastating combination of factors is to blame for the rising problem. People in the second half of the baby boom, who came of age during recessions in the 1970s and 80s, faced distinct economic disadvantages. Housing costs are soaring in many cities. The nation's system of nursing homes and assisted living facilities is not equipped to handle the needs of homeless people who suffer from high rates of substance abuse and mental illness. Before Phoenix officials began clearing some streets of people this month, there were about 900 people living in a few square blocks, known as the zone and another 900 or so living in emergency shelters on the gated human services campus in the same neighborhood. In Maricopa County, which encompasses the Phoenix metro area, an annual count in January documented more than 2,000 homeless people 55 and above, and nearly a third of those were 65 or older. Living on the street ravages the human body, street doctors and advocates say. Homeless people contract chronic diseases and other geriatric problems much earlier than average. But long waits for housing and a lack of specialized care expose them to a continued onslaught on their health. After providing treatment for acute illnesses, hospitals often discharge homeless patients who wind up back in shelters or even back in their sidewalk tents in what health practitioners in Phoenix ruefully call treat and street. The threat of relapses and rehospitalizations is large. 
Eight workers said seniors' medicine is often stolen by younger homeless people on the streets. It is not unusual to assist clients with dementia. Staff pass out adult diapers. Some unhoused seniors remain at the shelter for a year or more while they await placement in subsidized housing, assisted living, or a nursing home. But CAS is not licensed to provide nursing home level care, and staff are not trained as nursing assistants. So patients cannot remain if they have advanced geriatric care needs and require help with activities of daily living such as dressing, eating, and going to the bathroom. They need a higher level of care than the current shelter system can provide. There have been times where they had to turn people away, where it's really heartbreaking. They come in a wheelchair late at night, and they can't take care of themselves. In those instances, staff work to get an alternative space as quickly as possible, such as a hotel. In Phoenix, the summer heat can pose as a particularly grave threat of dehydration, heat stroke, and burns from bare feet, arms and legs coming into contact with blisteringly hot concrete and asphalt. Quite a lot of our patients have mobility issues. A primary care doctor who treats patients living on the streets from a mobile clinic run by Circle the City, a local homeless aid group. There are homeless patients in their 80s out here. In years of researching homelessness, there are countless paths to sudden homelessness for older adults. It often involves the death of a spouse or parent, which means income is lost and rent or a mortgage can no longer be paid. Other long-term chronically homeless people are simply aging on the street. Medicaid, the health insurance program for the poor, will only pay for a long-term nursing home or assisted living bed if someone is unable to care for themselves. Many elderly homeless people are not debilitated enough to meet that criteria. That's where the gap in the system is. A pinball effect takes hold and homeless people bounce from homeless shelter to hospital, then to a nursing home for a short-term recuperation stay. Once that short-term stay ends, nursing homes must decide whether the person is infirm enough to qualify for long-term care. If the answer is no, they must leave the nursing home, starting the cycle over again. Respite centers now number about 150 around the country, up from 80 in 2016. They often are funded at least in part by local hospitals that want to avoid discharging homeless people back onto the streets. They are designed to help homeless people recuperate for a few weeks after a health crisis. But with nowhere else to go, elderly people tend to stay far longer. In Anchorage during the pandemic, shelter operators took over a hockey arena to provide socially distanced quarters for homeless people. But they quickly found that elderly people with wheelchairs and walkers could not get up the stairs from the arena floor to the mezzanine where food was served. It highlighted the need for a vastly expanded respite unit for homeless elderly and disabled people. Catholic Social Services has opened an expanded version of a respite center, what it calls a complex care facility in a former hotel where more than 65% of current residents are 55 and older. Still, residents are free to come and go, which poses problems when caring for people with dementia. One man in his 70s walked out in January and was found at the airport several days later, facility staff said. He told police he was waiting for a flight. He didn't have a ticket. He had a coat on. He had a beanie on. He was well prepared for the weather conditions. But I have no idea how he got out to the airport. Now the man is on a waiting list for an assisted living facility in Anchorage. Yet another problem arises, however, when people approach death while in respite care. Some respite programs are starting to provide that service because there is nowhere else for these folks to go. Ambulances pick up a dead person from a tent in the zone about once a week. Reasons vary, but the combination of aging bodies, brutal living conditions and drugs is often deadly. They walk the streets early in the morning, performing wellness checks on seniors. Cheryl, 59, huddled in a pup tent, said she had returned to her spot on the street after being discharged from the hospital two weeks before, following what she said was a second heart attack. It was already hot out at about 8 a.m., and she was surrounded by heavy blankets. She appeared thin. She gratefully accepted water bottles. She said that she was ready to give up her tent, and come inside a shelter even though she said she has not gotten along with people in the shelter in the past. I'm tired, Cheryl said. Karen, the former auto worker, said in two interviews on consecutive days that said she has moved back and forth between her native Mississippi and Phoenix several times in recent years, traveling by Greyhound bus to be near family. Karen said she has endured sporadic homelessness for years. She lived in an assisted living facility for a time in 2022, she said, but even at the subsidized rate it consumed $600 of her $800 per month social security payment. She moved in with a nephew, but that didn't last and she wound up at one of several shelters at the Human Services campus. Early this month she was waiting to move into a subsidized apartment that would cost her one-third of her monthly social security income. It would probably leave enough for cable TV payments, she said. So I hope you found this video helpful, if you did leave a like and a comment. And if it is your first time on the channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment, like and share the video. Until next time.